Right. Um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, some uh, some communicating with the server using fetch. Um, so uh, where do we want to start? Um, let's talk about what that means at all. How about um, communicating with the server? We uh, have built a, a little web page. Uh, we have it uh, doing stuff with the DOM. We can click buttons and do all that. Um, now the third uh, pillar, the third thing that we'd like to hook in there is being able to um, save data to a server, get information from a server, uh, all that kind of good stuff. So uh, what does that mean? Web pages uh, or yeah, browsers uh, communicate uh, one of the ways they communicate, the primary way is over HTTP. Uh, HTTP is the hypertext transfer protocol, transmit, transfer. Um, so it's a, it's a protocol that says how servers and clients talk to each other. Uh, a web browser or a, a mobile app or uh, whatever is a client. Uh, a server is literally just the machine that runs or just a program that runs on a computer somewhere. Uh, it could be your computer. It could be a server somewhere else in the world. But it's basically just a program that runs on a computer that uh, is open to receiving uh, requests and will respond to those requests if you ask it in a certain way. And uh, that's what the protocol part means. Protocol is just an agreement about how we talk to each other. Uh, humans have protocols, um, say, good morning, you say, good morning, I say, how are you doing? And you say, fine, because uh, nobody actually wants to know how you're doing, apparently. Um, so we have protocols. Uh, computers also have protocols. Uh, HTTP is one of those. And uh, the way it works is um, it will uh, send a bunch of text to a server over a connection and say, here, here's my request. Uh, that it's like there's not anything to do, but there's somehow things to do. I think we got some. I did all the young dogs running out of this morning. That's there we go. There's one. <laughs> um, uh, the requests are just chunks of text that are sent over. They're strings, basically. And they have different parts. Uh, it lets us know uh, what kind of request it is, whether it's asking for information, whether it's sending new information, whether it's asking to change some information. Um, it might send some information along with it. It will definitely say, hey, give me this kind of information here, uh, the location it's looking for. And uh, if it is formatted in the right way, the server will say, cool, I understand. Um, here's the stuff you asked for, or I will do the things that you asked for, and here's some information back, or here's some confirmation. And that is also generally uh, a string in our case. So it is a text-based uh, communication. It is uh, stateless, which means that um, it, it's not uh, live, it's not concurrent, concurrent back and forth. It's you send some stuff uh, and then you hang around and wait for stuff to come back. Um, yeah, so that's like the overview of that. And uh, it's, you know, we use it because that's what browsers use. Um, there are other ways to communicate with sockets and other things. Uh, this is the main way that most things do stuff and the, uh, the only way that we'll be teaching, so. Um, Cool, cool. Um, do we have any like kind of like overall questions about what all this means or what we'll be doing or anything you want to dive deeper into in that respect? All good? Great. Um, cool. So today we will probably mostly be focusing on one way uh, to talk with stuff, and that will be the get. Uh, method that's just saying, hey, server, give me some stuff. Um, cool. And the server, we're going to be using a little server here. Um, let's, uh, let's do this. <coughs> um, let me share screen here. Um, we'll share that one. Great. Cool. Uh, and here is my, uh, there was a chat window. Um, here is my VS code. Let's hide this meeting controls. Great. Uh, so here's the thing that we've been working with for a while. Um, I am going to uh, set up a little uh, server for us uh, using this thing called JSON server. Basically, what it is is that it will 
uh, simulate a, or not simulate, it will be a server, um, but it will use a JSON text file as a, um, uh, as a data source instead of like a database or something else. Um, so the first thing we need is some data. Let me, uh, whew, I should have done this beforehand probably. Um, let's do a uh, data JSON. <coughs> cool. So um, what's JSON even? JSON is uh, basically, it's a JavaScript object notation, I think it is. And basically it is a, uh, a, God, I'm using all these words. Uh, it's a standard way to basically represent data in ways that a bunch of different, uh, it, it's, a, it's a predefined way to transmit data that we can use regardless of what the client is, what the platform is, what the server is. Uh, and they look suspiciously like JavaScript objects. They're not JavaScript objects, but they do resemble JavaScript objects in a lot of ways. Um, so let's, uh, let's put together some data How about that. Um, why don't, uh, you know, I'm going to use, I'm going to use one of the things that, uh, that ChatGPT is actually good for. <laughs> do I have ChatGPT on this browser? Yeah, I do. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, or, or not, you know, what? I'm going to, oh, I think we can do this with J, uh, you know, what? I'm just going to do it by hand. Uh, I think that'll be the easiest way to do it. Um, so what do we want here? We want some sort of resource uh, and a resource is going to be in a, um, uh, a domain, we call it. Um, oh, actually, you know, I know an even better way than using ChatGPT. Um, and it is called uh, you know, Fig Data Generator. Um, it's called Makaru. That's the one I like to use. <coughs> Makaru is a great way to, um, create uh, specific kinds of data. So uh, I'm just gonna go with the uh, standard users here, I think. Uh, I'm gonna generate, uh, let's just generate 10. Uh, I want it in JSON format. And um, yeah, great. Uh, I am going to generate that data and it's gonna put it in a file for me, cool. Um, let's open that up with VS Code. Boom, great. Let me format that nicely. Cool, so uh, I'm just gonna copy paste this into our other file here. Cool, so this is what JSON looks like. A uh, couple rules about JSON. JSON always has one root object. So in this case, it's an array. Um, it could be an object, it could be a number, it could be a string, uh, but it's always gonna have one object in the root there. Uh, Kimberly, yeah, you have a question? No, never mind. I just answered my own question. I was just searching for the how to generate data button on Makaru. Oh, it's like at, at the bottom there. Yeah, they, it's not super obvious. Uh, yeah, Makaru is great. It has all sorts of different things you can generate. Um, and it will do it in a regular fashion as opposed to chat GPT, which you just feel like, I don't know. I like data. Here it is. Um, cool. So uh, we have one root object. You'll notice that um, an object, again, can be actual objects, arrays, strings, numbers, uh, et cetera. Uh, since we're gonna have a bunch of data, we're gonna use an array. And we're going to have a bunch of data objects in that array. These look again, suspiciously like JavaScript objects. These are strings. These are not actual JavaScript objects. This is a text file. Uh, but it does look an awful like, lot like one. The main difference is that the keys always have to be in quotes. Um, I think they always, both sides have to be in double quotes, um, just because it doesn't. It, it requires double quotes. Uh, you can put bare numbers in there. That's totally fine. Um, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that. So this is a JSON data file. We've got uh, ten random users with first names, last names, emails, genders, and IP addresses. So um, let's set up JSON server to use this. Uh, I'm gonna pop open a terminal with control backtick. And here we can see there's our data JSON file, boom, boom. boom. Um, I'm going to use JSON server. If you have not set up JSON server yet, I recommend that you do that because you're using it all the time. Uh, you can do npm install dash g for global uh, JSON server. 
and that will uh, install JSON server globally. So you can use it wherever you like. Um, to start it up, uh, you can just say JSON server, uh, and you can either do watch, or I think now you can just give it the name of the file. Here, data must be an object. Mm, I swear it is. <laughs> um, data must be an object. Found object. Wow. <laughs> what, what does that mean? Does it need a variable name at the at the beginning? It shouldn't. No, I don't think so. Um, Data must be an object. Weird. Uh, let me let me do it the other way. Just make sure I wasn't. Uh, watch data JSON. No, data must be an object. Found object. Mm, I don't. I don't like that. Um, that's not going to be helpful. That's not going to be helpful. Oh, know what? It must be an actual object. So. JSON itself can be anything. Read the errors and believe the errors. JSON itself can be anything. JSON server, because it is serving stuff in a particular way, does require the base thing to be an object. So uh, I'm going to make it an object. And it needs to be an object because um, basically this is going to be representing a, uh, a resource. So we need to know what kind of resource it is. Uh, and so we do that by putting it in an object and telling it what kind of resource it is. Right now, I'm going to say it's going to be uh, users, we'll say. Uh, so in here, now we have one base object with uh, a list of users. We could add more. We could say uh, books, and then have a bunch of books here. Uh, we are not going to do that. The other thing that JSON doesn't let you do is put a comma after stuff, uh, unless it's, if it's the last one, which JavaScript does let you do. Um, cool, so we have an object. Uh, we have a, uh, a name for our resource users. Uh, and so now, now let's try this. Fantastic. So uh, we can see that it is running. Uh, so the root server is running here. Our users is running here, which is what we actually want to see. Uh, if we go to that URL, we can uh, get, how do you, all right, yes, auto format code. Um, on a Mac, it is, uh, it's muscle memory, so I need to look at what the keys are. Uh, it is option shift F. I do it compulsively. It makes things so much easier to understand. I recommend doing it all the time. Um, I think it is turned on by default in VS Code now. Uh, if not, there might be a format or extension depending on... I know it does it by default for JavaScript and JSON. Python, I think you need to install something else, but that's for later. Um, if you can't get it to work, let me know, and we'll get you hooked up because it is so useful, so useful. Um, great, thanks for asking that. Um, so here is our, <coughs> here's our get request. Uh, we made a request to localhost 3000 slash users. And hey, our server is running here and we can actually see, uh, we made a get request to slash users. Uh, it, this is the return code, 200 means it's okay. Um, and then it says, so the important, this is gonna be, great for debugging in the future. So this is what a GET request looks like. <coughs> a GET request, and uh, we can look in the network tab here. Let's do it again. Boom. Uh, network tab, also incredibly, incredibly useful for debugging. Here's the request we made. Um, here are the headers that we sent. We said, this is the URL that we want to get. This is the method. Um, and then this is what came back. And we can actually see the response that came back and that's the preview of it. So uh, we know that it came back uh, technically 304, which is also fine. 200s and 300s are generally good. Um, so we made that request. We sent off an HTTP request to the server that's sitting on the machine. The machine said, cool, let me see if I have anything for users. I sure do. Uh, here it is. We can also request a single ID. So if we want to get Emily here, Emil, we can put an ID at the end and we'll just grab that one resource and we can see uh, the same thing here. Okay, 200, okay, great. Um, cool, and this is generally gonna be a familiar site uh, for all GET requests. You'll make a, make a request to 
Uh, and when you load a web page, you know, when I load uh, Canvas or whatever, and I hit return there, that is a get request. Anytime you put something in a location bar and hit return, that's a get request. And we can see that's true. I'm just hitting return, loading that page, and that's sending a get request to that page. Um, so that's what you're gonna see most of the time. I think we're gonna mostly focus on get requests today uh, and then talk about the other ones tomorrow because uh, there's a lot of stuff surrounding all of this simple bit as well. Um, cool, so that's how we do a get request in a browser. That's how we set up our JSON file and our JSON server. And again, we can see all the requests that are coming through here. Um, you can also use a program like Postman. Um, I like using one called Insomnia, which is also nice. Um, and you can do the same thing, get HTTP localhost 3000, I think it was, uh, users. And can't connect the server, probably because it's a different localhost 3000 users, HTTP. Did I spell everything right? It's a colon. Colon, there it is. Um, cool, so we can see there's the stuff. We can look at all the headers in there too. Uh, Postman does the exact same thing. It's just a slightly different look. Um, I feel like Insomnia takes a lot of the junk away, but people like both, so use whichever one you like. Um, great. Any overall questions about just like, what even are we trying to do here um, with the requests on JSON server, anything at all? Um, I know some folks had trouble getting it set up a little bit. Um, if you have trouble getting it set up, we can talk about that now. Yeah, Kimberly. Can you go back real quick on how you pulled the file once you created it? Because I missed that part. Um, say that again? I installed the server, got the mock data, but I'm not, I missed the part where you actually pulled the data after you in triggered the mock server. So, or I am triggered the server, the JSON server. Yeah, so by pulled the data, you mean made the requests? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, cool, yeah, so... To make the request, there's a couple of ways you can make a get request. You can either do it from the browser, so you can just put it up in the location bar and load it up like any other web page. Okay. You can also use Insomnia and just make sure to tell it, do a get request, put it there, send that request off, and it will give you your response there. Okay. Is that helpful? Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Uh, what else we got? Cool. So um, that's how we do that uh, with a browser or with uh, a program. How do we do it? How do we do it with JavaScript? So um, these are sandwiches. Um, we're gonna pivot. Uh, we're gonna pivot from sandwiches to users. These are my users. Uh, comment all that stuff out there. We're not gonna have a form right now. Uh, Make that users great. Um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna comment all this out for now and kind of hide it, and we will maybe use it as reference later on. Get off of my screen. Great. So um, here I would like to do some stuff. So just to double check again uh, at the top of our thing, I'm gonna just console log in and make sure that it's just where we want it here. Um, go back to our console, go back to our, uh, oh, we need to serve up the page, don't we? Let's serve up the page. Um, I'm gonna do it with light server because I always have trouble with live server. Um, cool, here are my users. We're in, great. Um, you can always ignore the fave icon thing. That doesn't really matter. Uh, or you can, if you want to. Uh, come on, give me a new window. Touch. That'll no, no, take care of that. Um, it's basically just the, the file that it uses to make this little icon up here. Uh, but you never need to worry about it. Uh, cool, but our JavaScript is hooked up. We are in. So 
let's talk about what it's going to take to get that information. Um, JavaScript uses fetch, which is a built-in command. Um, there are other ways to do it in JavaScript. Fetch is the easiest and newest. Um, in the bad old days, we had to do all sorts of bad stuff. But now it's, it's pretty easy. Um, to make a fetch request to a URL, we say fetch and then the URL. And that URL is in quotes. Um, and that's making a fetch request. And we can actually see on our server here. So um, we've got a couple of already. Let's load that. Okay, that page loaded. And did it make that request? I don't know. Make a request for us. Yeah, it made that request for us. Um, yeah, Eileen. Yeah, uh, just for like following along, would you be able to open both screens at the same time or something? I'm just having trouble following um, as you're switching back and forth. Yeah, let's see if I can do that. Um, hey, look at that. Is that better? Yes, thank you. Let me collapse that so we can actually see stuff there. <coughs> cool. Um, can I bring this down to a different spot? Yeah, Megan. Yeah, I've been using the live go live option in Visual Studio Code. How did you do that other option? Um, it's a program called Light Server, L I T E. Okay. Um, you can just run Light Server like that. You install it with npm uh, install dash g Light Server, um, just like a JSON server. Um, you go to a directory, run Light Server, and it will serve up the index HTML from that page. Okay. Yeah, either one, either one works. Um, I always have to wrestle with go live half the time, so it's just easier for me to do this way. So this is the way I've, I've done it for a long time. Uh, and yeah. Um, what's the difference between those servers and just telling it to open the HTML file? Great question. Um, not much. Um, well, so a browser has two different ways to show a file. Um, this way, uh, we're actually starting up a web server and it's making a get request to that web server for index HTML and the web server is sending back that page. Um, if you just open the file, you're just directly looking, you're just browsing that file itself without any server in between. Um, both ways will work. Um, this has some extra little goodies, like it'll auto reload. So, um, and there, there are a few interactive things that we probably won't ever hit that are easier to do with a, a web server like this, <laughs> but overall for our purposes in phase one, they're pretty much the same. Yeah. Kimberly. Apparently I'm going to have a lot of questions for you today. Um, when I do the exact same command that you're doing, it's saying that it's not uh found 404 not found um when you're doing this here yeah the fetch http it's not it's saying it's not found so i'm wondering if i did something wrong with my json server yeah so when you're starting up your json server does it give you uh, a url that looks like this what's the command to start it up let me try it again um just json server and then the name of the file that's what it is. Okay. Thank you. Is it a different URL? Yep. Yep. Well, yeah. Cool. Yeah. The port may be different on yours, depending on how things are going. Um, yeah. I'll always grab the, grab the server uh, from there. Cause that'll be, that'll be right. Uh, cool. Thanks for asking though. Um, other questions about this general setup? Great. So we have made our request. Fantastic. That actually makes a request to the server. We can see it coming up there. Um, this does us no good because we have not gotten the response. So <coughs> um, how do we get that? Well, um, fetch is a function. What Anyone know what fetch as a function returns when you run it? A promise. A promise, yeah. Um, and what's a promise? Uh, a promise, like everything else in JavaScript, or almost everything else, uh, a promise is an object. Um, it's a capital P promise object. 
uh, we can actually see if we type a fetch, it should give us a little, yeah, hey, look at that. It's a promise. Um, and we can actually look at MDN. Oh yeah, please do, please open that up. Um, it'll return a promise where is da, 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 request object, da, da, find promise. Um, and a promise object is another kind of object here. So um, basically a promise is an object, uh, an object that uh, has three states it can be in. It can have a like a pending request, a pending action, uh, or it can go from there to a success or a fail, um, and it can't go back. So, um, and it has some functionality attached to it. So we can see, uh, even if we want to say, uh, you know, I promise, equals fetch that. Bring this over a little bit. Um, I can actually console log that out. Uh, and we can see down here that, hey, there's a promise and it's pending. Oh, now it's fulfilled. Um, so this is actually an object that we can look at and poke around in. Um, and hey, look at that. Oh yeah. Um, promises are objects that have methods on them. And the, the two main ones that we're gonna be using are then and catch. Basically, uh, the way it works under the hood is you a promise will be doing something, whether it's uh, making a, a fetch request. Um, there's a lot of things um, it can do. Um, but basically, when it's done, it will either go to the success state or the failed state. Uh, I think it's uh, fulfilled or rejected, I think. <coughs> um, yeah, fulfilled or rejected. Um, and then it will run one of these two methods it has, either then or catch. Uh, then will run when it is uh, successfully done. Catch will run when it comes back with an error. Uh, and finally, will run either way. So um, we can actually um, do this. We can say uh, my promise dot then. So this is the function that it will um, run when uh, it's not entirely true. Basically, this is what will run when it comes back successfully. Um, what then actually does is it attaches a, uh, a function to the promise that will run. So uh, then is our way of doing that. So we can say then, um, you know, do some stuff. Uh, and that's, that's a function. So I can write a function that does some stuff. Um, and I'm just gonna say, you know, console, uh, we did it. Great. So, hey, we did it. Um, so what's happening here? We are making a fetch to this URL. Um, it's going off and doing all its complicated stuff. Um, this is also asynchronous. What does that mean? Um, that means when you tell it, hey, go off and do some stuff, um, everything else in your program is gonna run before it, no matter how long it takes, it's talking about it. We're always gonna at least do everything else in this script first. So the order of operations here, uh, and this is a little bit complicated. Uh, we are doing this fetch. We are attaching this function to the fetch that says, when you return successfully, do this stuff. Then after everything that's in here, it's gonna come back and say, oh, uh, I came back successfully. I'm gonna run the stuff you put in then. Uh, and that just happens to be a function that says we did it. Um, and I can kind of show you that by doing a couple console logs before and after. So, um, oops, that's not what I... <coughs> Uh, before, um, and we'll just put everything after here. So, um, what this, what we kind of expect to happen as human beings with squishy human brains, uh, we expect it to console log before, we expect it to do the fetch and come back and console log we did it, and then console log after. 
Um, is that what's actually going to happen? No, of course not. JavaScript. Um, what's going to happen is it's going to console log out before. It's going to set up our fetch and say, hey, when you come back, console log, we did it. And it's like, cool on it. Uh, and then before it even makes the request, it's going to console log after her. Um, the thing about asynchronous things that really kind of helped me think about them, um, as you go forward, you know, you might find a case where you're like, oh, I want to wait for it to come back to do something. I'm not sure how long it's going to take. Maybe I'll like put a sleep in there, like have the program wait for a while. Um, that's never going to be a good time for anyone. Um, basically, the way I like to think of it is that an asynchronous request, like a fetch, uh, could come back in one microsecond or could come back in a year. We don't know. That's the, the nature of asynchronous stuff. But usually it comes back in a couple hundred microseconds, less than a second. Um, but we can't assume. It might come back 30 seconds later if the server is slow. So the, the way we handle that is with this then. We say, when you come back, do some stuff. Uh, and this could be anything. This is just a JavaScript function. Um, and the way we usually see it is by just chaining this then on the end. So we say fetch. The fetch is going to return a promise. And then on that promise, we're calling the dot then and saying, hey, when you come back, do that stuff. And we'll be good. Uh, and you'll often see it like that. Uh, and so we can see that, hey, it did the thing. Um, this is tricky. You're going to get it wrong the first bunch of times. Um, the, the only way to really burn it in is to make a bunch of mistakes and fix the mistakes. And you'll see, you'll eventually get it. Uh, maybe immediately, maybe it'll take a while. Um, questions about promises or how this whole asynchronous stuff works. I thought I saw a hand up earlier. Oh, cool. <laughs> so good. I already answered the question. Great. Uh, any other questions? You're kind of just like thinking about how any of this works. Cool. Cool. So. Um, let's actually put this to work then. Right. So um, let's see. Aha. Actually, one more thing here. I'm going to get rid of this before and after. Um, not only does this call stuff, and I, you can kind of think of this almost as like an asynchronous um, a callback, uh, like, a, um, like an event handler is, right? Um, you, when a thing happens, it's going to run a function for you. Um, just like an event handler passes the event to that function, the promise is also going to pass something back to the function. And the um, it's basically what comes back from your thing. So um, we call it a response here. Um, and I'm just going to console log out the response and see what it is. Uh, and so in this case, the response is going to be the HTTP request from, or the HTTP response from the server. That's what fetch responds um, with. So let's see what we come back with. Um, hey, it's a response object. Great. Um, look, it's got a whole bunch of stuff in it. Is there anything in there that is useful to us? No, nah, there's the body here. It's a readable stream. What does that do? I don't know. Um, it basically comes back with this response object that has a lot of useful information about the HTTP, HTTP response. However, um, that response is not immediately useful to us. So uh, what we're gonna do instead is we're going to throw another dot then on there. Um, a response um, is also uh, a thing that kind of acts like a promise, or that's not true. Uh, a response is an object that, um, has uh, a method on it called uh, dot JSON. So uh, I'm going to say, um, instead of causing it, I'm going to say uh, it's going to return response 
Jason. Um, what well, Jason returns, hey, is a promise. Um, and what that promise does, and I don't know why it's a promise. Um, I can't imagine why it would need to be unless you're parsing like a multi gigabyte JSON file. Um, it's a promise that takes the response from the HTTP response, turns it from the JSON string into an actual JavaScript object and returns that object. Um, cool. Uh, so, Hey, um, can I jump in with a quick question? Absolutely, yes. Um, so I'm seeing the get slash users that's popping up at the bottom in the terminal. And the thing that's popping up for me is um, how is the fetch returning something if we're not typing out the get in like line three and so forth? I guess I just need to kind of refresh on that. Like, we don't have to actually say get right. this from here. We can just I, I, say... Fetch does a get request for us. Oh, okay. Fetch is a default get. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good question. Uh, we will be doing other kinds later and specifying it for sure. Um, cool. So since this is a function here, um, we're going to be doing this an awful lot. So instead of putting a function down there, uh, the idiom we're going to be using is a uh, a little arrow function in here, um, and uh, it'll often look like this. Uh, and this does basically the same thing. It says this here is a little function, um, and in fact, I usually shorten it to res just because um, this this whole thing inside the parentheses is a function, right? It's an arrow function. Uh, it takes the response as an argument. And because of the way arrow functions work, it's going to return this next part. So since it's returning that, um, and it's returning a promise, we can just chuck another then on the end of here. And so this then is being called on the promise that is being returned from ResJSON. Um, this is complicated. It took me a long time to figure it out. <laughs> Hopefully it won't take you as long as it took me because <laughs> you have better uh, material to learn from. Um, but yeah, so this dot then is running on the promise that res.json is returning. Um, if you don't want to remember that, just know they have to throw that in there. Um, but what it returns, uh, what that promise returns is uh, the stuff that we actually want. It's going to return that JSON object. Um, Oh, Megan, the return question, uh, this is an implicit return. So when you have an arrow function that looks like x goes to x times 2, um, that's the same as uh, function x, x times 2. It's just a, a slicker way to do that. Uh, we could literally copy paste, uh, you know, we could make this a like that. A um, little bit harder to read. So we tend to just do that instead. Does that answer that question? Yeah, thank you. Cool, yeah. Getting used to arrow functions is a whole another thing that we kind of gloss over. Um, yeah. Um, there's a question scrolled up over here. Uh, should we just say res response, res it, bring it back, send it to an event? Yeah, yeah, because this is the argument. This, so this whole thing in here is an arrow function. So you can call this function whatever you want, as long as it's the same in both places. Got it. Yeah, I feel like I keep getting tripped up with that. Like, mm -hmm. what are the cases where it could actually be whatever? And then what are the cases where it's an actual like operator that's that has to be a specific word? Yeah, generally when you're defining a function and you're defining the uh, the parameters that come into it, you can call them whatever you want, whatever makes sense to you. Yeah. Um, cool. So uh, since uh, the then here wants a function again, uh, I'm going to give it a function. And that function is going to be console log with an E. So it works. Um, console log is just a function, just like any other function. 
Um, and since we're not actually calling the function here, we just want to give it, say, hey, whatever you come back, run this function with that thing. Uh, this is basically the same as saying like, um, you know, here's my, here's my JSON um, console log that JSON, same thing. Um, or if you want to put it in function form, like that, um, exactly the same thing, uh, but this is just a little bit easier to read this way. Um, and again, it, it reads a little more Englishy, um, even though like reading down through it is a little bit crunchy. Um, once you get used to it, you just read, oh, fetch from this URL, turn it into JSON and then console log it. So um, let's see if I'm lying. Does it actually do what I want? It actually does what I want, look at that. Uh, so look at that. We have made a request to a URL uh, we have gotten utilized the promise to get the JSON out of that request, and now we're console logging that JSON. So we have that data to use now in our JavaScript application, um, which is a huge step, a huge step. Um, for our purposes, we are actually going to be doing something with that data. So um, I'm going to, instead of just console log, I'm going to you know, do something with that data which means I need to define a function. Uh, and here I'm going to you know, take the JSON and console log it. Uh, that should do the same thing over here. Great, it does. So um, this, is the, this is the nugget right there. We're gonna fetch from a URL, we're gonna turn it into JSON, and then we're gonna do something with that JSON. Uh, and what that JSON is, this is just JavaScript. At this point, this is just an object um, and we can do whatever we want with it, <coughs> um, including all the things we've learned in the last couple of days. Uh, what questions do we have about this core, core nugget of the process here? Yeah, Megan. Yeah, going back to that, like how the fetch returns it implicitly, um, like if all of this was within another function, like I'm doing this based off the lab, fetch lab that we have. Um, if all of this is nested like within another function, do we then have to return the fetch? Because that was one of the ways I had to do the lab. <laughs> huh. So I don't know. Um, interesting. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what the lab asks you to do there. Okay. Uh, but that's a it's an interesting question because um, there's a few different uh, there's a few different tricky bits in there. So if we have a um, you know if we have a function that's like function uh, you know, stuff from the lab, and we're doing stuff in here, and we say fetch uh, fetch something uh, you know fetch my URL, mm -hmm. um, and we want to return that fetch. Mm -hmm. um, what are we actually returning from this function? What does stuff from the lab return? The promise. The promise, yeah. Okay. Um, which means that later on we do something like stuff from the lab um, dot then because we're calling dot then on the promise that's returned from that. Okay, and if within that stuff from the lab after return fetch, say we continue and do the then, like we parse it into JSON, then you know whatever and then we return all that are we then returning the result not the promise yeah so this is okay. the we'll get tricked up um, yeah yeah meaning no <laughs> sorry no. <laughs> um yeah that's that's a cool question um so you mean like uh you know then um you know here's my json uh return json or something like that right mm -hmm. um so what this returns um, is just kind of going away uh, because this is just the function that it calls on the stuff. And the response um, doesn't really go anywhere useful for us. Um, so we can't really return stuff out of this that would come out of the function. The only thing that can really come out of this function is the promise if we're doing fetching there. 
um because we would have to do something like and I, this wouldn't even work if we did like you know constant uh results and then or let result uh let result and then in here we'd say cool we got the json and we're going to say um you know, result equals json because uh, we're storing it in that variable yeah um, okay and then you return result to return yeah. okay oh, what's gonna happen there instead of what we expect because of the asynchronous nature of fetch Kind of, kind of like what, what we saw with the console logs before. Uh, what, what is this function going to always return? Result. Uh, mm, result? Uh, it will return result. And what's results? Uh, the promise? Or no, now it's the result of the promise. <laughs> I'm explaining this very terribly. <laughs> Yeah, so so fetch is asynchronous, which means mm -hmm. that we're gonna run all this stuff, and then fetch is gonna come back. Okay. So what's gonna happen is that we're gonna say let result equal undefined right now. Say mm -hmm. fetch, do whatever you want to do. Return result, and then after we return that result, fetch is gonna come back and be like, oh wait, um, oh you're gone already. So, oh, so it'll be undefined. It'll always return undefined because. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is not this is not a thing that you can really do here. Um, what you might want to do is um, you know outside of the function we have uh, we have you know let it empty empty array here and mm -hmm. now we can do this. So we're not returning anything from the function, uh, but we're saying. Hey, fetch, do your thing, and when you come back, um, I've got a I've got a variable outside here waiting for you. Um, and in fact, we probably want to do something even like, uh, and you will definitely see something like this, and then like you know, uh, do something with the data. Uh, and so we will set the result to the response, and then render it to the page or to log it or send it somewhere mm -hmm. uh, we want to set it to that and then do something with it okay yeah so you it's it's difficult i'm not going to say impossible uh but it's not really a thing that you do returning the data that comes back from a function that has a fetch inside of it okay thank you yeah yeah I, i'm curious what the lab says about that i'd like to I'll look at it at some point yeah, I can send you what ultimately passed to outside of this if you want. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Um, other questions? All right. Uh, so let's do something with it. Um, hey, we've got a bunch of stuff down here that we wrote before. Um, you know what? In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna start setting something up like what we had. Uh, I'm gonna let users equal our thing there. Um, so we're gonna have a users array that's just nothing. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just leave that there. Uh, I am going to make a new function down here. Um, I'm not gonna do a form anymore. Uh, I'm not gonna do a click anymore. Uh, but I'm going to make a function that looks like our old sandwich function. Uh, function is going to be uh, render users. Um, <coughs> yeah, cool. Uh, so render users is going to look at our users array. And uh, we're going to do the same stuff that we did before. We're going to uh, clear it out. Uh, and it's going to be the users list that we changed it to here. Uh, users. So we're going to clear out that users list. And then we're going to say users uh, for each. Um, I'm going to call it render user. Singular. Um, and so then for each thing in that array, uh, just like our sandwiches, we're going to Uh, take a user, which is going to be the object now. Um, we're going to uh, create a new list item. Boop. 
Um, we're going to set text content of it to, um, let's do it to the like user. We'll make it a little template string here. Uh, user first, what does the data look like? Uh, first underscore name. So we're gonna put the name in that text content. Um, <coughs> uh, and then we're going to uh, grab our user, uh, user um, list there. Um, so we're gonna document, get element by ID, nope. Get element by ID, get element by ID. Um, user, what did I call it? Users, uh, users. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, append our new uh, list item. It's me. Um, cool. So we have that. It's not doing anything yet. Uh, now we want to say um, what we just, well, actually, yeah, I just typed there. Um, I'm going to. Um, yeah, we'll say, you know, take our JSON. We're actually not, we're taking it here. We're going to make a dual function. In that function, we're going to, uh, we're going to say, hey, uh, our users is going to equal that JSON that we're getting back. And then we're going to render the users. And render users uses that users list up there. And maybe it'll just work. <laughs> Look at that. Um, cool. So we have made a fetch request, gotten some stuff from a server, and then taken that server stuff, use what we learned uh, a couple days ago, and put it on the page. Um, this, this stuff here is not new. Um, all we're doing is doing our fetch. We're getting that array back, and we were just console logging that array before. Uh, so we are setting our user list to that array that we got back and then saying, hey, render that uh, list out there and put it on the list. Uh, and this is, um, you're going to be doing this a lot probably. Um, this is a, a pretty a pretty common thing to do, get some stuff, put it on a page. Um, and this is the only like, you know, this little function here is just saying, Hey, I've got my, just like we had our list of sandwiches before, um, I've got a list of stuff up here. Um, this is my data I'm gonna hang out to. Right now it's empty, but who knows what's gonna happen in the future. Uh, we do because we told it. Uh, we're going to get our stuff. We're gonna get the list of stuff that we got back, put it in there, uh, and then run our uh, sandwich, sandwich maker here. We're gonna look at that list uh, users that we're sending that data to, and we're gonna put them all on the list. Uh, pretty cool. Um, now what questions do we have? And this is a this is a dense little nugget of, of code, right? Um, this incorporates a lot of stuff. A lot, a lot of stuff that we've. Uh, Go back to your HTML document for a second. Yeah, of course. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Yeah, I got something wrong here. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you bet. Um. Yeah, this looks short and sweet, but it is. It is densely packed with a lot of stuff. Um, and so if it doesn't click immediately, that's totally fair. Uh, yeah, Megan. Can you just uh, explain the render user, um, going back to like what Azani was saying with like the argument that we're just have like the user argument there. Mm -hmm. um, can you just like go through that function and just explain what purpose that serves? This one here? Mm-hmm. Um, so say we don't have anything, all of this is not there. All we have is this render user. <clears throat> um, so we have an empty list over here with nothing in it. That's just uh, has a div users. Um, so what we are doing is we have a function. Uh, it's called render user. 
it takes in a user and this in this case this is going to be the user object that we got from our data so it's going to take something that looks like this as an argument um, so first we're going to create our list item element with document create element uh, so this is just an empty list item and then we're going to set the text content of it and instead of just taking a string here we have that object so we need to use that object uh, to get something out of it. So right now I'm getting the first name and the last name, first name and last name like that. Uh, and I'm just smacking them together in a string. Uh, and then that's gonna append it to the list item and we're all good. So the, the thing is when we call this function, we need to pass it in an object. So, and that object has to have at least the first name and last name. So if I wanted to call it, you know, render user Bob like that, we're gonna get some errors undefined, undefined, because the first name and last name on that Bob object don't exist. So what we need to do is we need to pass it something that looks like that, that has the same shape. So we can say, you know, uh, first name, Bob, last name, builder. And now when we call it, it's going to pass this object in to here and then pull things out of that object and put them together in a different way, put them on that list. Does that get at what you were looking for? Yeah, and going back to your HTML, um, I I think why I'm confused is because, or I'm sorry, not HTML, data, maybe it was the JSON. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm seeing that that's called users with an S. Um, yeah. So I'm confused why it's able to grab that user first name if it's not matching. Yeah, so um, that users in the data JSON, that's this part here. Um, we are, so this data JSON is being run through a server and that server says, hey, when someone asks me for slash users, I'm gonna give them this array. And so by the time it gets down here, um, you know, when it gets to render users, um, we've already, we've done our fetch, we've gotten an array out of it. And so we can just, you know, this may as well just be a, an array like we did with sandwiches of something that we put in there. Uh, by the time, you know, it's down here, you know, we can call this, um, you know, uh, the data we got. And that will work, you know, just the same. This So when we're, when we're naming our arguments for our, functions, we can call it whatever it wants. The computer doesn't know what this means. It just knows this is the label that you gave this thing so that you can use it here. Um, we generally try to call it something that what it is, so it's easier for humans to read, but the computer doesn't care what it is. Um, we can call it giraffe and then get giraffe first name and giraffe last name. Does that help with that part? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and that and that's just a JavaScript function thing that you'll you'll get used to. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> none, none of this is obvious. So yeah, just just takes practice. Um, Azadi, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I just wanted to like think out loud for a second here because I feel like I had sort of an understanding um moment as you were talking. So it's like for the user for that argument that's on line 16 it's like that can be anything because that only means something in the context of that function itself yeah as soon as that function is over we don't we don't care anything about what was it yeah which is line 18 but um it, it so as far as the users that are represented by the array of data mm -hmm. that like so like Megan, I think this connects to the question that you were asking, which is like, if you go, um, sorry, if you jump back to the JavaScript, um, the way that we connect it all and the reason that the user variable on line 16 doesn't matter is because on line 13, that's where we actually connect that function to the actual object itself. Um, so that's where we've, right. created, we've created a list of users. So again, this could be, right. you know, this could be contractors. And as long as right, and then that would still be contractors, yeah. But that that contractors variable represents like 
Oh, okay. So wait, that's an empty array yeah. that so we request. We're getting this array into it, uh, and and what we call it in here doesn't matter. Ah. Except for the request, we could call it, you know, uh, call it a. Uh, okay. Yes. So I think I got it now. So at the top of the JavaScript file, we're creating an empty array, and then we're fetching the data to put into that. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, and so the only thing the stuff in here has to match up with, this key here just has to match up with the thing that we're requesting. And we can see here in the resources, that's what it is. And whatever we call it in our program, it doesn't care. Um, it could be you know, XYZ in the URL. It's just, this is just the, this is the protocol. This is the, yeah. Yeah. how are you, nice day thing. It's just saying, hey, server, uh, do you have a resource called dinosaurs? And the server is like, I sure do. Here is some data. And what's in that data yeah. may or may not be dinosaurs. We don't care. That's just the way we request that data. Uh, it's yeah, nice they match up, but you know, sometimes they don't. Yeah, yeah. All right. So real good. Last thing. So, but now I'm saying too, in line six, when we say users equals JSON, mm -hmm. that so like that users that's represented in line six mm -hmm. is the same as the users in line 13 and in line one. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So online we're okay. saying placeholder that empty array there on line six we're filling yes. it with data we got and then on line 13 that's when we're using that list full of stuff to put it on the page yes okay perfect so yeah i think line six is what for me fully makes the connection because it's like at what at what point does the user variable actually contain the data that that we pulled like so yeah yeah, yeah. and so we've got here um you know here we lay, um, Make it make it super clear. So we've called. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Vegetables. Now we're looping over that vegetables. We're signing it there, and you know we can call it user here. We can call it car, book, whatever we want. Um, so that really we, helps a lot. <laughs> so just, just like completely make that a distinct distinction there. It's easy. It's so easy to get it mixed up when everything's like the URL is users and the. List is users, and the thing is called yes. and the thing is called users. Dinosaurs and vegetables. Dinosaurs are needed right here. <laughs> um, and again, like this way, it doesn't tell us anything about what's actually happening, content-wise, context-wise. Basically, uh, as as a human, we would read this and be like, "What the fuck were they thinking <laughs> when they did this?" It works. It does exactly what we asked it to do. It's getting users and it's putting them on the page. But like, I'm gonna come back to this six months later and try to work with it and be like, why is this called vegetables? These aren't vegetables. Um, so that part's yeah. just for the developer. Um, and you know, the developer is a key ingredient. <laughs> so making it easier yeah. for the, that's a rule two thing. That's a making it easier for the developer to understand um, is important. But again, if everything's called user, user, users, users, um, uh, that can make it messy too. So, um, and these are toy examples. Um, so they're going to be a little bit simple, but in an actual thing, naming them precisely what they are is going to be super useful because we're not going to just put users on there. We might say like, um, you know, uh, clients or, um, shopping cart or something specific to what it actually is. So yeah. na naming things, what they are naming functions for what they do. Um, making sure we have verbs for functions and nouns for variables uh, just makes it easier to develop. Um, David, yeah, what's up? Um, sorry, I was playing catch up the whole lab and I just caught up and it's all yeah. working and it's all very exciting. But that one, uh, the um, the fetch portion there, can you just briefly walk through that one more time and just describe what's happening? Because that was the part where I kind of was in the weeds. Yeah, so before we set anything up, we've got our vegetables list here. <laughs> That's an empty array. It's just hanging out. Yeah. Uh, so when, on line three, we're saying fetch, and we're giving it a URL. Um, by default, it will do a get on that URL. And so it's going to send a HTTP request to our server. And the server's going to be hanging out, waiting for a request. And it's going to be, finally, someone made a request. And it's going to say, what did you request? And it's a dinosaurs. And the server's like, I got dinosaurs for you. Here they are. And so it will send an HTTP request back with a list of dinosaurs. Um, fetch, the function, returns a promise. Um, and so we can use dot then to say, hey, promise, if you come back successfully, 
run this function with whatever comes back and fetch is like got it um so fetch does the thing makes the promise makes the request comes back successfully and says hey i got a successful request it's a request object um let's run this function on that request object the function we're going to run is dot json dot json returns another promise uh and we're going to say hey dot not JSON promise. If you come back successfully, run this function on whatever comes back. And that promise is like, cool, got it. Um, the function we're doing here says, take uh, take whatever comes back, put it in that vegetables array, and then we're going to run this render users function, whatever it does. And so when the JSON promise comes back and says, hey, I've parsed all your JSON, here's a JavaScript object, uh, the function is like, cool, thank you. I'll take that object, I'll put it in that array, and I'll run this function down here. And then when when it runs that function, then that is like my job is done. Does that uh, little story help out? Yeah, I think so. I think the it's the line four that I, I I'll probably just need to dive into a little bit on my own. The res and res.json. Yeah, like, yeah, and and this is um. You know, when, when you get in the weeds with promises, um, eventually you figure out how it works. But this is, I mean, you can just boilerplate this in and it'll work. But the the real thing that it's doing is that the, the fetch promise is going to come back with uh, a response object, which is not really super useful to us um, data-wise. And so you're saying, cool, when that comes back, there's a there's a method on that object that takes the JSON out of it and returns it as a regular JSON object, uh, and so we need to do that extra translation step before we can actually work with that data. And then line five, you've now transformed it into just JSON, and so you can just say then take the JSON and put it in the array. Basically, is that was what's been happening in line five and six? Yeah, and this is actually maybe not the best line for it because this is, um, you know, this is our uh, object, right? Um, it's not JSON is text; it's a string. So this is the yeah. object that comes back from the JSON. Okay, so does it matter what you name it there? Nope, nope. Um, this is going to be um, convertibles. <laughs> this is a keep running into this in JavaScript where it's like you can name it whatever you want. It's yeah. like, all right, well, yeah. this one's Variables are just labels for you as a developer to say, you know, the, the computer doesn't care what's in it. It's just like, I've got a box, I'm going to put some stuff in it. And what's written on the box, the computer does not care at all. It's just going to match up labels. So, so, so entirely for you as a developer to understand what's in that box. So request.json is converting the response, the promise into an object, or basically yeah, okay. Oh, sorry. Response.json is converting it into essentially storing it in memory somewhere as a something that you can act on. Is that the way to think on it? Think about um, it like an object, basically? So basically, the, this response object represents the entire HTTP response with the, the headers and the response code and mm -hmm. whatever else in it, um, a bunch of stuff that we don't care about. So basically, we're saying, hey, response, you're a complex and beautiful person. Um, can we please just only get the JSON data out of you? And it is like, sure, no problem. Um, so this is where it, we're just saying, hey, response, just tear out the JSON and give it to us. Um, and that's what it does. And we are then immediately passing that into another function here. Um, so it's not really getting stored anywhere necessarily. It's just kind of like being passed hand to hand function to function. function. And you're just naming it whatever convertibles or or veg, whatever it is, but yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Right. Thank you. Someone, you you come back and read this in a month, and you're like, I was psychotic. I what was I doing? Um, so yeah. Um, did um, someone else had a hand up? Uh, it was me, but it was just those because Jason was listed on four, five, and six. Mm -hmm. Um, I was gonna say uh, is five and six just Jason data basically yeah. so right. this so is that's what i call the json data yeah so this this on five that's the this is actually the parameter the the um what what you're defining in your function as the thing that's coming in and here's yeah. what we're using it and the, yeah the, they, they, the, they looked related because they're all named the same but they and so I mean, the, the the dot json is actually a function a method on the response object that takes the response object and returns the json from it um, does it just return as a string 
Um, right. It returns it as an object or as, okay. a, as a, a, a JavaScript thing, <laughs> whatever it would happen to be, whether it's a, an array or an object or a string. Okay. Yeah. So the JSON itself is, and that, that's why we need to do this conversion because inside the response, there's a big long string that has this in it. It's just a string that has this information in it, which is not incredibly useful to us in JavaScript. So we're saying, hey, response, take that big string and turn it into the object that we want that it should be. Yeah, that, that's why I kind of renamed this because JSON is a string. It's a big string. And what we want is the object out of it or the array. Um, I sure can. Thank you. Okay, because I was reading through that function again. And I was at the get element. I was on line 19. And then so get element by ID users. I was yep. just making sure there was actually something there that like it does pull yep. that in. Okay. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Thank you. This is something that we can you know, call. This is the anchor. And we're going to get the anchor over here. So those names do have to match because you're yeah. getting the element by the ID. Okay. Yeah, but cool. again, semantically, it doesn't mean anything. It's just right. it have to match up. They just uh, have to match up. Got it. Yeah. The, semantically, they should mean something to us. <laughs> <laughs> It'll save us a lot of time. But uh, yeah. But they're, okay. They're okay, thank you. Yeah, you bet. Um, cool. Other questions about this? Great. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it can be confusing because we're kind of, we're, and, and that's why the names can be confusing too, because we're dealing with the same kind of thing just in different contexts, right? So when everything's named users in our, in our JSON file, this is called users because that's what they are. And these are users in, this is the users that's defined in our, JSON text file data in our, um, you know, in our server here, we are also asking for, uh, let me save that and restart the server, go back to the dinosaurs. Um, we are also going to be using users as part of the URL, even, you know, that's got to match this. Um, so that's users in the context of a request. Um, here. Uh, and then since we're getting it back, you know, we're going to say, okay, cool. Um, we have a list of users. That's our data. And so the data is a list of users, but it's in the context of like where we're storing it. And then we have render users and render user. And that's the names of the functions that we're calling. So that's the context of like the stuff we're doing with it. And then inside our function, we have the, the thing that we're calling the property. And then in our page, we have a list of users. Um, and that's, you know, we're, we're saying this is where the users live on the page. So we're going to be using the same um, <laughs> and then our you know, data, whatever. Uh, never call anything data. It's the worst name. Um, so we're we're using the same language in a bunch of different places. And one of one of the skills that you develop as a developer as you do your ten thousand hours um, is like doing that mental context switching. Um, doing like, okay, cool. Now I'm talking about my data. Now I'm talking about my um, my you know, uh, URL. Now I'm talking about the the stuff that I'm getting back from the request. Now I'm talking about the, where I'm storing the stuff. Now I'm talking about the names of the functions. Now I'm talking about the stuff inside the functions. Um, even if they're all named similar things, just knowing that they're in different places is, it's it's just a skill that you develop. It's just a practice. Um, David, what's up? Yeah, so I was just about to ask, is there something we can rename these two functions that would be closer to what they actually do? Because I think it's, I understand what they do now, but I, I always have to go back and read them um, and, and to really fully get the, what they're accomplishing. Yeah. Um, for me, they're, they're named after what they do. What would make more sense for you? 
Well, you're not, <laughs> the first one is essentially just you're grabbing the list mm -hmm. and emptying it and then putting the user in the list, right? So it, I don't know, <laughs> when I hear the word render, I always think of rendering fat. So <laughs> that's the <laughs> problem that I keep running into. So yeah. That, so in, in the context of web pages, you're going to see render a lot, um, less so yeah. now than before, but basically it means, uh, it, I mean, it's basically the same thing instead of, um, you know, rendering the fat from the, the animal, uh, and taking the stuff that was the animal and turning it into what you want out of it. We are taking the, the full animal of our, our list and rendering it from, this useless JavaScript thing into our beautiful web thing that now that we want. Um, so we're, we're just taking the stuff out and putting it on in a different place. Um, but we can, you know, call it, um, you know, uh, put uh, users on the web page because um, that's what <laughs> that's what that means. Uh, and then we put the user on the web page. Um, but that's actually that's actually a great point. Um, I'm used to this rendering terminology. So um, same as like when you're rendering graphics, you're turning your data into a picture um, or a 3D object or whatever. Um, so when I see render users, my brain goes, oh, I'm going to take the data. I'm going to put it on a, in a visual medium. Um, that might not be the case for you. Um, and the most important thing for your code is that you can understand it and you can debug it and you can change it later. Um, and especially that you can understand it a month from now or six months from now. Um, so naming this in whatever way makes the most sense to you is the most important thing. So I'm going to use render users or render whatever a lot um, for you. If that completely breaks your brain, call it something that makes sense to you. Um, or if you're working with a group, make sure that everyone's like, okay, cool. I know what that does. Um, create user on page. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Did we have other questions? Yeah, Megan. I'm so sorry. <laughs> never, never, never apologize. We are here to ask questions and, and learn stuff. Yeah, I'm just really trying to drive this home. I guess for me, does the render users actually add like, um, words to the page since the inner HTML is set to nothing? Yeah, so the first thing it's doing, so the reason we have that there um, is because if we don't, uh, if there is other stuff in there, um, it will just keep putting stuff at the end. So um, before I had, um, you know, I can do a uh, render user um, and that was the uh, first name was Bob. Last um, so if I do this, Bob will be up front here, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if I had, um, so instead of render users, um, you know, let's render users twice here just for kicks. So if I render users twice, it's going to put everyone on it twice, um, which is not really what we want to do with this function. This function, we want to create a representation of this data on the page, whatever that data is. Um, and so if we run this 10 times, we want only what's on that page or only the data that we have to be on that page. Uh, and so this is, we clear it out. So every time we render it, you know, we can do this 10 times and it's always going to just have the representation of our data on the page uh, instead of a, a, a rolling <laughs> list of how many times we ran it. Um, and that's a, it's a, it's a concept that even uh, some you know, intermediate developers don't really get is that what we see should represent in some way the data that we have. Our, our view should be representing what our model is. Our data should be showing up in whatever, and whether it's a list on the page, or we're turning a uh, you know a list of points into a three D model, or we're you know turning a description into a picture, um, we want those two to be synced up. So if we change our data, we want our view to change. Um, and so 
we need to make sure that however we're putting that data on the page, we need to make sure that it's always going to be an accurate representation of our data. Does that make more sense? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, awesome. Um, I think I saw one other hand up for me. That was just Megan still up. Awesome. Um, cool. Uh, this is a lot. This is the basic stuff. Um, Eileen, yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as you said uh, any more <laughs> questions, I realized I had one. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. Could you uh, just speak to like inner HTML? Would you say that best practices to only use that to clear things out or? Um, um, I just remember seeing in the modules, like you can run into security issues and other things like that with that particular method. Um, that's always interesting to me. Um, and I, hmm. I, I don't uh, how, how, how do I say this? Um, there are legitimate security concerns sometimes with JavaScript. There's cross-site scripting, um, there's cores stuff. Um, they're usually not things that you are going to be doing yourself that are causing problems, security problems. Um, why is that? Um, because when the JavaScript is in a browser, it is completely out of your hands. So someone could go to your page and uh, open up the console and be like, ha ha, I'm going to um, you know, get element, uh, animation. I'm gonna get element by ID. I'm gonna get that header, and I'm gonna say um, uh, equal. You know, mark is a. And bam! Just like that, someone has hacked my page, right? Except it's just in their browser. That doesn't affect anyone else or anything else. Um, so I could, you know, set the text content to be, oh, it's like a, it's a blinking gross thing or whatever. Um, it's just going to be on their browser. So setting inner HTML literally just does what it says. You can set the inner HTML to a thing. Um, the problem comes when you're getting the data from somewhere else. So right now I'm just setting inner HTML to empty to clear it out. Um, if I wanted to, you know, dynamically set the header to something, I could set it there. If I am like here, this is a great uh, thing. Uh, if I'm grabbing our uh, data from somewhere and I don't necessarily have control of that data, uh, maybe users are submitting stuff or I'm getting it live or whatever, um, I need to make sure that either I can trust that data, which never trust the data, um, or that I've done something to that data in the process of putting it on the page that makes it safe. So someone could, you know, oh, here, uh, my name is a uh, console log. Uh, you're a dummy. Um, so if instead of putting that on the page um, as a string, uh, is it going to reload for us? Oh, doesn't matter. Um, if I, you know, I'm just putting down on the page as a string, but if somehow I was saying, oh, put whatever I get from the server, put it inside of a script tag and run that. Like that would be a bad time <laughs> because lots of people can do lots of bad stuff. Um, but in general, if you're just doing stuff um, with your code um, and you're not like executing code that you're getting from somewhere else or executing JavaScript that you're getting from somewhere else, uh, you're gonna be fine. Most 99% of the stuff you're doing, um, there's no security issues. Um, and I, I definitely, even in our curriculum, I see people like, oh, don't use inner HTML, don't use, um, what was it? There's a couple of things where like, oh, this could be a security issue. It's not, it's really not. <laughs> um, yeah, there, there are some things that are legitimate security things, but as long as you're like, you have control of your data, you have control of what you're doing with it, it's, it's not gonna be a problem at all. It's not gonna break anything. And worst case, it's gonna break something on this page. Um, you're not gonna be able to like, you know, delete stuff off your computer from it because the browser doesn't have access to that. That's why we can take arbitrary JavaScript from somewhere else and run it because um, you know, the 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 browser is a relatively safe space to do that. Um, there are there are some some things you can do, uh, but in general, you can you can grab JavaScript from somewhere and run it. That's gonna be fine. Okay. Yeah, that's helpful. Thanks.
Cool. Um, I'm curious where it says that in the curriculum so I can <laughs> shake my fist at the clouds. Um, awesome. Any other questions? Cool. Um, this is a lot of stuff. Uh, we're going to keep this video hanging out on the playlist like everything else. So you can go back and look through it if you want. Um, yeah, uh, this is complex. It, practice is the way. Uh, Stephen, yeah, what do you got? Uh, I just saw an off question, but I see you have the extension for Docker there. Will be will we be getting exposure to that during this or no? Nope. In fact, I don't. Okay. I never ever use it ever, <laughs> so it, should, it shouldn't even be there. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, we will not be doing any Docker stuff at all. Uh, cool. Anything else? Um, an extension for Chrome to format code um, for Chrome. Yeah, there's there used to be something called Prettier, mm. which uh, to just made the code readable. Because if I pulled up an API right now, it just be lines and lines and lines and lines and lines of information oh. without any organization. Yeah, um, like ESLint or something. I use, what do I use? Oh, I don't use any of this one. <laughs> Crazy. Um, I use, there's one called mm, JS, JS something. Um, yeah, there's a couple like JSON extensions you can use. Um, I'm shocked that I don't have it on this browser because um, I use it for JSON all the time. Um, but yeah, there, there are a few, I can't remember what they are off the top of my head because I installed them a long time ago and haven't thought about it in a while. Um, yeah, it's like JSON Prettier or Beautify, JSON Beautify maybe, something like that. Uh, JSON, JSON View, I think, is one of them. Um, yeah, JSON View, I think, is the one that I used in before. Uh, but, you know, people like, release extensions all the time, so uh, Google is your best friend there. Could be something new that I don't know about. Um, also, anything else before we wrap it up? Cool. Stop sharing there. Um, great. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. This is this this whole part, like when we start tying stuff together, is always super fun. Even though I've done it a million times, um, get to play around with stuff and kind of talk through it. Um, yeah, play with this. Um, wrestle with it. Break stuff. Make mistakes. Fix the mistakes. Um, it's really the only way to learn stuff. Um, I'll post this video in the usual places and uh, link it in the channel. And uh, other than that, feel free to holler in the channel anytime and we will talk about tomorrow. We'll talk more about um, doing other stuff with Fetch. Cool. Um, thanks. I'll see you all uh, at Stand Down. <laughs>